Good morning. Well, as Peter said when he listed the six Ds, the first D was digitization. And computers are the technology that's making all this happen, that's making this change go on. So I want to give you a taste of a couple of the key ways I see recent developments in computing affecting manufacturing. And closing with perhaps the largest of the manufacturing industries in the world, single manufacturing industries, and the changes very briefly that will come to it. Now, having been on the internet for a long time, I've identified what I think are the ingredients that allowed it to foment an exponential revolution. And I won't cover them all in the short time we have today, but there's a couple I want to give some particular attention to. One is the arrival of open platforms as a way of doing business. You've heard about open source software, the software that's running in your phone, most of your laptops except for Windows, the web servers you're going to, where everyone builds, takes what they build and contributes it back to the world. This idea is actually spreading now into hardware. This computer board you see here called an Arduino is open source hardware, which is to say that the design of the hardware has been released and is free for anyone to modify and anyone to make. And that's made it one of the most successful computers when it comes to making a small computer for prototyping. It may actually make sense, just as people in the software world learned, to take the designs for your hardware and let other people manufacture and improve it. Because no matter what company you are, no matter how smart your people are, most of the smart people in the world work for someone else, as Bill Joy said. And only this system, which allows people to collaborate, has let small projects come and take over the world. But another concept I want to give you is actually not the smart networks that Will mentioned, but a concept we call the stupid network. Now, back in the 1980s, the phone companies were selling something called the Intelligent Network. I don't know if any of you here are bellheads and remember this, but the idea of the Intelligent Network was they built a new generation of phone switches. And those phone switches could give you all the new phone features of the day. Call waiting, call forwarding. You got them on the phone that was already on your desk. Now, I'll just explain for the younger people in the room, people used to have phones on their desks, and wires came out of them and they spoke on them. You can find them in museums. But the phone didn't change because the intelligence was in the network. The internet turned that upside down and said, let's make the network stupid and the edges smart. All of the smarts of the internet, this thing that changed the world so much, are not in the internet. They're in your phone, in your laptop, in your tablet, in the web server you're talking to. This idea of stupid infrastructure and smart edges is one of the internet's greatest contributions. Every industry and the manufacturing industries have to understand that they have to virtualize and become software platforms. In fact, I'll go further and say that if you are not a software company, if you don't think of the value that your company owns as residing in large part in the software that you developed, I think you may soon not be a company in the 21st century. You need this flexibility for a very important reason. Neither you nor I have a crystal ball. We like to imagine we do, you pay me more, maybe I'll pretend I do, but the reality is we don't have this crystal ball. If you come to me uh, talking about 2016, sorry, about 2025, I can give you some ideas, but I'd be lying if I had some great certainty about it. Here's the problem. You need to make your plans for 2025, not with the knowledge of 2016, the way you're thinking of doing now, but with the knowledge of 2023, because people come to me with their plans for 2025, and I say, well, I don't know too much about your plan, but I do know one thing, it's wrong. It's gonna compete with a small competitor who made their plan with the knowledge of 2023. Now, the only way you can face that competitor in the modern world, no matter what business you're in, is if you have the flexibility to change everything you do because most of it lies in software. These are our landlords at Singularity University, NASA. They're not very good landlords, but they're great rocket scientists. And they send probes out into space. And last year, you probably saw they got one all the way to Pluto. Now, that probe was launched over a decade ago, so long ago that by the time it got to Pluto, Pluto wasn't even a planet anymore. But the probe, when it got to Pluto, didn't have to worry about that. It was running new software just downloaded a few months before that did new types of image processing and signal processing that were not conceived of when the crew launched it so long ago. This is the sort of platform you have to be even when you make physical goods, even when you're in the manufacturing business. You must be based on software. Airbnb can rewrite their software and completely change what their company is while other big companies cannot. This is how you must be if you want to compete with the young companies who are coming after you.